today we're going to learn how to shade our drawing. You're going to begin by lightly sketching the shape of the highlights. So you're looking for those brightest whites and you're sketching the shape of that highlight. These areas are going to remain white. You're not going to shade your brightest whites. This area here stays the white of your paper. You're going to shade the space around your highlights to create some contrast. So very lightly, we're lightly using short strokes and light pressure. We're beginning to shade around those highlights. So here we're going to map out some more of those bright highlights. So I'm just lightly sketching in the shape to begin. This way I know not to shade within those areas. You want to look very closely at your reference photo and if you need to um, draw some more X grids or um, break down some of your rectangles more, you can but you're looking very closely. Don't let your brain take over. I'm measuring the space around and the space in between. And then we're going to start blending and layering those values so that your values or your levels of gray match the levels of gray in your photo. And this takes time. It doesn't happen very quickly. Um, it takes lots and lots of layers to get those darks. If you try to go too dark too fast, you kind of push down on the paper and you get sketchy lines in your shading and it's really hard to blend them out. So you really just have to trust that it, it's not going to look perfect in the beginning. That if you keep at it and you keep layering very softly and lightly, you're going to slowly build up those darks and get those transitions from dark to light. You can't just go dark from light easily with one layer. You have to build up those layers and work on blending lightly with your pencil in between where your values are dark to where they fade into lighter. So you can see how this is really just the base layer here and we're mapping out where all those highlights are and very lightly starting to shade around it. I'm not worry just yet about getting my values extra like super dark because I know I'm going to come back to that area so now I'm just getting in the value on the handle of the spoon and as you can see I'm just starting super super light with light pressure and this video is sped up really quite a bit um, oh notice there I'm erasing the um, grid lines. You want to make sure you erase your outlines and your grid lines before you start shading. You do not ever want to have an outline around your image. You always want to double check and look at your image, make sure you're working in the correct value and that you don't have outlines. So here now I'm just blending out the, um, the cast shadow. I'm layering very softly with short strokes and I'm just adding some more layers to both darken and even out the tone of those darker darks. So I'm building them up very slowly. You can't just get them in really hard with hard pressure without getting the scratchy lines in your shading. So just really taking your time and being aware. If you feel like you're rushing, just kind of slow down and take a breath and then, and then continue on. So here now in this particular image, the background is a darker value. So it's going to take quite some time for me here to build up that darker value. So I'm just kind of taking my time and layering with short strokes the space behind the spoon and the fork there. So I'm just building that, that layers, those layers up nice and slow. And notice how many times I have to really go over them to get it nice and even. And I'm trying to, to really speed this up so you can see how long it really takes to get that fade right there. That shading looks really sketchy and liney. See how I changed direction of my shading and I'm going over even the lightest areas multiple times. It's very, very common and tempting to want to rush, 
but the more you take your time and the more you go back and reevaluate and look and and really start seeing and trusting the process that um you know just just those layers are going to come so it's not going to look perfect it will look sketchy in the beginning but you can get rid of those sketchy lines by blending so here i'm going to show you the background the background is really dark and this takes so much patience um, if you find yourself getting frustrated, just take a break or move to another area and kind of come back to it. Not every image is going to have this dark of a background. It really depends on um, whether your background was gray or black or white. Um, in this case, the background was gray. So I'm building up those different values and levels of gray. So it takes lots and lots of patience. So if your background is white, your values are going to be much lighter. So I'm just showing you here how I'm constantly changing direction. I'm not using long strokes from side to side. They're very, very short. And sometimes you get areas where it looks a little scratchy and then you just have to go back in and kind of blend a few times. It doesn't happen immediately. So I keep kind of going back to those areas, but I'm also being very careful not to go too dark. I'm really looking at the reference photo and seeing what level of gray or what value I should be working in. So this is how you really get those dark tones. One of the most common issues with uh, beginners when they're drawing is they really try to rush these larger areas, but you just need to be aware that it's, it's not it's not a rush job. It just takes a little bit of, a little bit of uh, extra, extra time. So see how my lines look a little bit sketchy here, but then I change directions. I layer nice and even, and I go back over it. It's not a one and done like like a coloring book when you're little. Once the color's down, it's over. Once you get the color down, you're kind of building your base and then layering and getting those smooth transitions. See how I'm going back where the one value fades into the next and really layering right there. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit just to save some time. 